Hi guys, I hope you had a good 4th of July. Safe? Yes. Sorry we didn't appear to you last week, but he was busy and we just thought we'd do it this week. So it's uh, good to see you guys. Um, hopefully we'll be doing Sunday school together soon. I know we keep saying that, but nobody really knows anything. So, so happy to see you guys again. Hopefully uh, you get this video and watch it and we will get into the lesson. All right. All right. So trying this at home, I got an iPad for Father's Day. So doing my own recording now, we don't have to rely on Scott's cell phone, iPhone to be able to do this. So yesterday was the 4th of July. It was the 244th birthday of the United States, celebrating our freedom from England and the rules and laws and taxes that they had imposed on the United States. And that's why we de declared freedom or independence from England. So, and our fathers wanted to be free from all the rules and all, some of those were religious rules um, that they were trying to impose. So, uh, but man has always wanted to be free, free from rules, free from uh, rules made by others. And that's how we were made. Um, when we were made, um, God made us. And how many rules did we have in the Garden of Eden? We had one, one rule. Uh, and we, it was a pretty simple rule, too. Um, don't eat of the fruit of one tree in the garden. It's pretty simple, pretty easy to do. Um, there was lots of other fruit around. It wasn't like they were starving. It wasn't like that was the only tree with food, and God said, don't eat of that tree. It wasn't like... Uh, the rest of it was, you know, broccoli and asparagus, and then there was, you know, Krispy Kreme donuts over there on this tree, and we were told not to eat of that. Um, it was a tree of fruit. It may have looked different. We don't know, um, but it was still one tree, and there was lots of other places to eat, and man couldn't follow that one simple rule in the Garden of Eden. Um, so consequently, um, there was sin, and that made a lot more rules, right? That we have to follow our lives by, or follow in our lives. It started fairly soon thereafter, right? And then God came down with the Ten Commandments and, and then the books of the law. And there's a lot of rules there for us to follow, right? Um, but then, and I'm going to read my notes a little bit. So then uh, the laws that, of the Jews, right? There's 613 laws in the in Jewish law, uh, 365 negative and 248 positive. And the 365 negative is one for every day of the year. The 248 positive um, are one for each bone of the body. So see, you're getting biology and Sunday school lesson all combined in one. So um, so we look at the rules in, that we have to live by now in this country, um, and I was doing some research on this, and so there is 5,000 federal criminal laws currently in place with, this is an amazing difference to me, 10,000 to 300,000 regulations in the federal code that have criminal consequences. And that's, to me, that was kind of funny that there was 10,000 to 300,000. That's, that's quite a range, but they don't know. Um, so that tells you how many laws, but they don't know how many laws there are or rules, regulations there are um, by a factor of 300 difference between the two. That's a pretty big uh, problem. So, and then when I went to look at for how many rules there are in the state of, or laws there are in the state of Oregon that we have to live by, much less Washington County and the city of Hillsborough. Nowhere could I find the number of rules or laws for the state of Oregon. Um, you can find lots of dumb laws um, by Googling. You can find lots of funny laws by Googling. But I will tell you this, that the Oregon Revised Statutes, which is the laws for the state of Oregon, is a 19 volume set of books and in that 19 volumes there's 
838 chapters of, of laws that we need to live by. And then, of course, on top of the 300,000 from the feds and those, then there's the county codes that we need to live by, and then there's the rules for the city of Hillsborough on top of that. So today we have lots and lots of laws to live by, and our freedom is much different than it was. Now, some of those laws are there to protect our freedom and make our lives better, but it's still a law that's in place. So getting back to the Bible, in the Old Testament, they had to live by the law. The law was what was there to make them realize that they were not perfect and that they could not fulfill the law in their sin nature. Jesus came and made it very simple. We have to do two things. We need to repent and we need to trust him. Doesn't mean that we don't need to follow the laws. We will want to follow God's laws, right? If, if we repent and trust in Jesus, we're going to want to obey God's laws and God's wills for our life. And if we're walking in God's will, then our lives will be simpler, right? And we'll know where we're going, right? We won't need to worry about this life. Um, we know where we're going to be when we die and in, in eternity. And eternity is a lot longer than our period of time on, on the earth. We still need to follow all the state laws and the federal laws and the local laws. We're not going to get away from those, right? I mean, unless those laws tell us not to do what God says for us to do, we need to follow those laws and we need to follow those rules. But Jesus came to the earth and was lived a perfect life. He didn't sin in any way. He was tempted just like all of us are in many ways. Um, but he lived a perfect life and he died for us so that we didn't have to worry anymore, right? If we repent and we trust in him, then, and truly trust in him, then we will go to heaven and we will have a life where we are with God for the rest of eternity. And that is the freedom that we should all desire our freedom is nice here on earth, having choices and having to be able to do what we do and live in a country where we're mostly free from things and being persecuted. Um, but ultimately, our goal is to be with God in heaven, and that will be for eternity, and that is much longer than our period of time here. Although sometimes it feels like, like the last four months here have felt like an eternity um, where we can't do many of the things that we could do six months ago. Um, but we still have freedom. We still have freedom to come to church. Um, we have church services this morning at 11. Um, be there. And, you know, we have that ability. Um, yeah, there is some restrictions in place on that. But we're doing it safely. So um, you have the ability to go online. You have the ability to watch Sunday schools. And you have the ability to read your Bible every day. Nobody's taking that away from you. So practice those freedoms. Pray for our country. Rather short message. It's 4th of July, and you guys can have some extra time to light up fireworks. So, but remember, it's about our freedom. Have a good 4th. Thanks. Bye.